is something. What's up you guys, it's your girl Seth K and I'm back with another video. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, comment, share, subscribe to this video, give this video a thumbs up. Hit that post notifications bell down below so you're notified whenever I post. Share this with your auntie, your uncle, your mammy, your sister's niece, nephew, baby, daddy, cousin on the left side, twice removed, but remarried into the family that married the uncle, niece, nephew, son. Share it with all of them, alright? Our subscriber count's going up, and I really appreciate y'all. Don't forget we're on a runway to run... What <laughs> Okay, we're on a runway to 1K, and if you don't know already, this week is the week of paranormal slash haunted house story times and I'm not even gonna hold you all too much longer because I know how much y'all love these story times and how much I love y'all so let's go ahead and get into the video let's go alright you guys so the first story I have for y'all today is Florida devil worshipping friends notice that Danielle Lee Harkins a 35 year old school teacher near St. Petersburg Florida started acting strangely in June of 2012 developing an interest in demonic rituals. Soon after, she was arrested for abuse of seven of her former students, as the Tampa Bay Times reported. Danielle Harkins told the kids they needed to rid their bodies of demons as the group gathered before dusk Saturday around a small campfire near the St. Petersburg Pier. They should cut their skin to let the evil spirits out, police said she told the children. Then they needed to burn the wounds to ensure that those spirits would not return. When Harkins held a lighter to one teen's hand, wind blew the flame out, police said. That prompted her to douse his hand in perfume before setting it on fire. The boy suffered second degree burns, police said. Another teen was cut on a neck with a broken bottle, police said. Harkins used a flame to heat a small key which she then used to castorize the wound. The police were notified because a friend of one of the students who practiced in the ritual raised alarms. However, none of the students themselves told their parents about the event or would comment following the arrest of Harkins for aggressive battery and child abuse. NBC reported, investigators said they've spoken to Harkins but she didn't spill what type of religion would require such drastic measures. She hasn't informed us exactly what she was trying to accomplish with this, Poots of the St. Petersburg Police Department said. Alright you guys, so we're gonna go ahead and go into story number two. The passing of Elisa Lamb. Elisa Lamb was last seen on January 31st, 2013 in the lobby of Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. She was vacationing through the West Coast documenting the trip on her blog and checking in with her parents every day. On January 31st, those calls stopped. Lamb had vanished. Soon the police were involved and her parents arrived to help with the search. They had nothing. That February, LAPD released elevator surveillance footage of Lamb before her disappearance. The footage shows Lamb behaving strangely in the elevator appearing to talk with invisible people, peering around the corner of the door, crouching in the corner, and opening and closing the door. But what exactly is going on in the video raises more questions than answers. Theories range from psychotic episodes, to demonic possession, to unknown assailants just out the camera's view. Around that time, hotel guests started reporting weird things happening with the Cecil Hotel water supply. As CNN reports, The shower was awful, said Sabina Ba, who spent eight days there during the investigation. We turned the tap on. The water was coming black first for two seconds, and then it was going back to normal. The tap water tasted horrible, Ba said. It had a very funny, sweetie, disgusting taste. It's a strange taste. I can barely describe it. Before a week, they never complained. We never thought anything of it, she said. We thought it was just the way it was here. On the morning of February 19th, 
a hotel employee climbed the roof and used a ladder to investigate the hotel's water storage tanks. That's where authorities found the decomposing naked body of Lamb, whose personal items were found nearby. After an autopsy, her passing was labeled accidental. NBC Los Angeles reported at the time about the strange circumstances in the hotel's past. The tank had a metal latch that could be opened, but authorities said access to the roof is secured with an alarm and lock. The single room occupancy hotel has an unusual history. Night Stalker Richard Ramirez was found guilty of 14 slayings in the 1980s, lived on the 14th floor for several months in 1985. An international serial ender, Jack Unterweger, is suspected of ending three call girls during the time he lived there in 1991. He ended himself in jail in 1994. In 1996, a female occupant jumped out of the hotel's window, ending herself in a pedestrian on whom she landed. In February 2021, a Netflix documentary called Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, explored Eliza's tragic case and the history of the cursed Cecil Hotel. Alright you guys, so we're going to go ahead and move on to story number three, the last story I have for y'all today. This story behind this majestic mansion is a southern classic gothic, draped in Spanish moss, studded with quaint cobblestone robes, and illuminated by all world street lamps. Every street in Savannah, Georgia feels like a time capsule buzzing with romance and history. Much like the well-maintained streets and squares, the homes throughout the city's historic district are nothing short of awe-inspiring. Their endurance is thanks to the preservation efforts in the city, which gained a lot of traction in the 1960s. When famed restorationist and antique collector Jim Williams came to town, Williams' own former home at 429 Bull Street takes up the entire city block of Monterey Square and is one of the most spectacular in Savannah. But in true Southern Gothic fashion, if you peel back the layers of historic charm, you'll find something sinister lurking underneath. Known as the Mercer Williams House, the 7,000 square foot mansion is a crucial stop on the city's many ghost tours and that's also the residence that inspired John Barron's Barron's best-selling 1994 novel Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. It's seen at least three untimely passings including that of 11 year old Tommy Downs when he fell off the roof in 1969. The 1981 fatal pew pew of Danny Hasford by Williams and Williams himself when he passed in the same room as Hasford less than a year after being acquitted of Hasford's passing in a fourth trial. Rumors about the crime and ensuing ghost stories continue to swirl to this day. Long before the two tragedies though, the house played host to the buzziest Christmas parties in all of Savannah and guests lucky enough to attend will be in good company. Williams' priceless antique collection. Williams' possessions included a presentation casket bearing the imperial coat of arms of Russia, a gold crown cipher of Tsar Nicholas II, a piece of the state carriage used at the coronation of Napoleon, and a pair of $10,000 crystal candlesticks that were a gift from Martha and George Washington to their daughter on her wedding day, to name a few. There's also famously a full-blown organ installed in the home, which definitely adds to the air of mystery and macabre. Underneath this esteemed collection, the house itself is rumored to be built right on top of unmarked graves of people who passed during the yellow fever epidemic in the 1800s. The Italianated home dates all the way back to the 1860s, when General Hope Mercer commissioned New York City-based architect John S. Norris to build it. However, construction was interrupted by the Civil War and Mercer never even lived in the home. According to the Georgia Historical Society, it was first occupied by John R. Wilder in 1868 
and was then abandoned for a number of years until Savannah's historic district was revitalized in the mid 20th century. While 429 Bull Street certainly has all the makings of a haunted house, the current owner and William's sister, Dorothy Kingery, focuses museum tours on the fabulous antiques and architectural details rather than any hauntings. That doesn't stop the ghost stories about the house from circulating though. Many visitors report visions of a little boy on a balcony or in a window a few years after Williams passed. People started to report that they were hearing lively music and seeing the house all lit up around Christmas. But when authorities would arrive, there was no activity observed. Who knows? Perhaps the museum manager is simply playing the organ to keep busy during a night shift. Or maybe it's something Alright you guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope y'all enjoyed my story times. Well, not my story times, but these paranormal slash haunted house story times. And if you guys do enjoy, please leave that down in the comment section down below so I know that maybe from time to time throughout the year, I could do them and y'all, you know, really enjoy these. Because I like doing story times, y'all. But anyways, that's enough for this video. <laughs> I hope you all have a good day. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe to this video. Give this video a thumbs up. And y'all, we're getting closer and closer to Halloween, so I hope you all have spooky nights. Love you guys. Bye.